Hello, everyone. This is Inside the Americas coming up in today's show. The escalating tensions between the U.S. and Iran has many Democrats saying Trump is abusing his power. Then the man who once ruled Hollywood in court on charges of rape. The trial of Oscar winning producer Harvey Weinstein underway in New York. And we'll take you backstage at the longest running show on Broadway, The Phantom of the Opera. I'm Jeannie Godula. This week, the news in the U.S. and much of the world was dominated by an airstrike on two sites in Iraq housing U.S. forces. For the Iranians, it was payback for a targeted U.S. drone strike that killed Iran's top general. The escalation in tensions has many Democrats in the U.S. up in arms. They fear Trump is abusing his power and putting America in a very uncomfortable position with his latest foreign policy. Tensions in the Middle East are at the center of all discussions in Congress. The Democrats are particularly cautious and are making their voice heard. If you look at every foreign policy endeavor this man has been involved in, we're worse off. This president, when it comes to these kinds of things, doesn't have strategy. The lack of strategy bumble us into war. The use of force by an American president without the approval of Congress is rare in the U.S., in recent history, this power has been exercised only once, notably by President Barack Obama in Libya back in 2011. This to the dismay of an independent association sympathetic to the Democrats. They have been pressuring the U.S. government for the last 20 years to put an end to its insurgency in the Middle East. For the director of Win Without War, the recent rise in tensions comes as no surprise. Americans right now have realized that these wars are not making us safer. They want to see them end. And the only question is whether politicians in Washington are going to listen to them. This is a president who ran on wanting to end endless wars, or who, who is claiming time and time again on the campaign trail that he is going to get us out of these wars in the Middle East. Well, he's finding himself on the brink of starting perhaps our biggest war in, in a very long time in the Middle East. And we're left with the conclusion that the president wants war. With war or de-escalation on the horizon, elected Democrats and activists continue to show a united front against Donald Trump's foreign policy. They continue to protest outside Congress every day until they are heard. Our picture of the week is this one, Harvey Weinstein, the man who was once one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. Here you can see him hobbling into court with a walker ahead of his rape trial. It all started with a few brave women coming forward with their stories of harassment and sexual pressure from the producer, stories that snowballed into the Me Too movement against abuse that reverberated around the world. Here's a look at the rise and fall of Harvey Weinstein. At the height of his career in the 1990s, Harvey Weinstein was one of Hollywood's most powerful men, racking up 300 Academy Award nominations and more than 80 wins. The Reader, Vicky won Best Comedy at the Golden Globes, Penelope won, Kate Winslet won, and then Inglorious Bastard got nominated for eight at Academy right. Awards, and then King's Speech won, and then The Artist won. Right. So the last four years have been a roll. He was also known for turning aspiring actresses into instant celebrities, but behind the glamour hid a pattern of sexual harassment and alleged assault. Scores of women have now accused Weinstein of harassment and rape recounting how he promised to help advance their careers in exchange for sexual favours. The bombshell accusations would first come to light in 2017. In October of that year, the New York Times published a story detailing decades of sexual harassment allegations against Weinstein. This would set in motion his fall from power and help ignite the Me Too movement, which saw women around the world sharing their stories of abuse and harassment. If you've been sexually harassed or assaulted, write Me Too as a reply to this tweet. Ousted from the Oscars Academy and sacked by his own production company, Weinstein would continue to deny the allegations until he surrendered to police in May 2018 on charges of rape and sexual abuse, although he would later plead not guilty. Many have raised concerns that he may not be held legally accountable. This following reports that the Weinstein Company reached a $25 million settlement deal with more than 30 alleged victims. There's also been speculation that Weinstein may be faking his physical ailments to garner sympathy from the jury. In his first interview in over a year, just a few days before his trial, 
Weinstein sparked fury when he said he should be remembered for the opportunities he provided for female actors, calling himself the forgotten man. Time now for our number of the week, 60,000. That is the number of people who have vanished since Mexico first started its catastrophic war on drugs 14 years ago. That number shines a light on the devastating human toll of Mexico's security crisis. It's also far higher than the government's previous estimates of those who have simply disappeared. Murders, decapitations, kidnappings and extortion. In Mexico, violence has become part of everyday life. And the toll is constantly mounting. Since 2006, more than 3,000 mass graves have been discovered. Here there are still the remains of nearly 1,200 people who were dissolved in acid. Often, bodies remain unidentified leaving countless Mexicans in an ongoing search for their loved ones. The most desperate ask for help from the Mexican folklore idol Santa Muerte, Our Lady of Holy Death. The people who come here have no solutions. They come to see the Santa Muerte to ask her for help. Ciudad Juarez is nicknamed the murder capital of the world. Since 2008, over 15,000 of its residents have been killed. There are so many contract killers here. We, the citizens, we must unite so as not to feed the insanity. The violence is so widespread in Mexico that it has a special place in the newspapers, La Nota Roja, the red section. After a long career, this journalist has seen a growing fascination with cartel crime. Today it's part of our culture. Crimes are glorified. The killers are even idolized. Since the start of the government's offensive against cartels in December 2006, some 275,000 people have been killed. Collateral damage in a drug war that shows no signs of stopping. A much more musical note for you now out of New York from Broadway. Manhattan's theater district is the biggest and best in the world. There are 40 theaters there and 40,000 tickets sold every day. Our team went backstage at the longest running show on Broadway, The Phantom of the Opera. In the heart of New York City lies a street known around the world. Broadway is a must-see for visitors and the ultimate goal for aspiring artists. The mecca of musicals offers up everything from love stories to adaptations, and there is one production that's gone uninterrupted for 32 years. When I was in six years, I remember that it was a great show, so I decided to, I uh, wanted to see it again. So. The Majestic Theatre is home to Phantom of the Opera, where the musical's lead, Megan Picerno, is getting ready backstage. I need to warm up a little bit and slow, because I'll actually use the show itself to warm up. So by act two, which is the most emotional and the biggest, I'm, I'm warm and ready to go. This show is a juggernaut. It is a marathon. And like to every Christine that has done this, you know, Christine is on stage for almost two hours. And she constantly is singing, constantly moving. When she's off stage, she's getting in and out of costume. There is no rest. Broadway is one of the city's biggest success stories. Every day, 40,000 tickets are sold and theaters are nearly always filled to capacity. Broadway also rakes in an estimated 12 billion euros annually for the city, and the records keep breaking. It's a natural escape. People look at their computers and their cell phones all day long, and at a certain point, they want to be in a location with live people laughing and crying and experiencing whatever it is that live entertainment provides that nothing else provides. Don't pray. The musical Oklahoma is the latest production to hit Broadway, and it places the stage in the center of the theater. 
Tickets cost an average of 130 euros and the audience always leaves enthralled. The caliber of what the performers do and the slickness and the, the diligence in every single aspect. Not a single moment's dropped in anything that we've seen here. The road to success isn't always easy. New York is brimming with talented actors all hoping to catch a break and end up in the limelight on Broadway. We'll wrap up now in Las Vegas, where the Consumer Electronics Show got underway this week. Some 200,000 people wandered through the massive tech extravaganza to see some of the coolest and quirkiest inventions of the future. Among the many robots on display, the very practical Charmin Rollbot, that's roll as in a roll of toilet paper that the little bot can bring you. Other practical inventions, a trash can that can change its own bag. I know I can use that one. And if you're allergic to animals and just looking for a pet that won't make you sneeze, there's the Kubo. Now, it was invented by a Japanese company after one of its employees was unable to bring her favorite cat with her to her new apartment. Sensors inside the bot can tell when a human is petting it, pushing it to wag its tail, just like the real thing. Well, almost. That's all the time we have for this Inside the Americas. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time for all the news from north to south. Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Reporting from across West Africa. All the latest in politics, economics and the arts in Africa on France 24. Our journalists are in every region, every country, to report on the emergence of a continent of unparalleled riches. Bringing you Africa's stories on France 24. Thanks for joining us. See you again. Liberté, Equality, Actuality.